Hello and welcome to another macro video. Today I'm looking at an example of text manipulation that I've done recently and I'll start with a sort of standard problem which is easy to solve and then show you the problem that I came up against and show you what I did. So uh, we're looking at a bit of text which has line, what look like paragraphs but actually when you turn on the visible the visible um, formatting marks you can see that these are actually individual lines and not paragraphs but you've got a double carriage return there for the end of the paragraph. Okay so the technique there is to use a find and replace uh, well three find and replaces in fact let's have a, a blank document uh, to make ourselves uh, a credit list and what we want to do first is to replace two carriage returns with some uh, bit of text which won't occur anywhere else anywhere else so I'll call it ZCZC which is what I always use um, so that is the two carriage returns at the end of the paragraph then all the uh, sorry change those to ZCZC then we want to change these paragraph end markers into spaces so that they're pulled up onto the next line so all the remaining paragraph ends shall become spaces and I'll do it as uh, carrot 32 which is the symbol for a space so it's actually visible on screen uh, actually we'll wind that up a bit so you can see it more clearly there we go uh, and then we change the markers that's the ZC ZC into either one or two carriage returns let's do it with two carriage returns okay so let's try that out so I tell you what we'll also do is put a highlight on there so that you can see um, what's happening a bit more easily. So let's run the Fredit, run Fredit. Okay, so what we've ended up with is those paragraphs, which is great. Um, and if we go backwards, if I do use undo, you can see the stages that it's been through. So I'll undo once, twice, and three times. So there are the original. There's the original. I do. The, I go forwards now. I redo the first find and replace. So there's the ZCs, and then I do the next one. So that pulls the whole lot into a, effectively one massive, great big paragraph, and then we change the ZCs into returns. Okay, that's nice and easy. So let's move that out of the way, and let's look at the text that I'd actually got. Uh, now this is the same text but this is how I actually got it um, as you can see the, the uh, text has been enigmatized in other words I've used random letter changing in order so that you can't read what this document is because it's a live document right so as you can see if we put the uh, formatting on um, every single line is joined together there's no there, are, there aren't any double Cash returns at the end of the paragraphs, so a bit of a problem. Okay, I suppose I could go through the whole document and I could, oops, not delete, um, I could uh, put a carriage return at the end of each paragraph, but this is a um, 149,000 word document, so I'm not going to go through all several hundred pages putting double returns in there, so I had to do a bit of thinking. So, the idea I came up with, let's just undo those. Uh, okay, the idea I came up with is that each paragraph, surely, each actual paragraph, will end with either a full stop or possibly a, a question mark or possibly an exclamation mark. So, uh, how about uh, doing a find and replace? Let's move that out of the way. Let's take the paragraph markers off there. Uh, Let's put a hash in there, just so that we've got um, a bit of space. Uh, what I want to do is a, a wildcard find and replace. I'll bring it in from my other file over there. Uh, so here it is. So the tilde says it's a wildcard find and replace. Uh, the square brackets say a character which is one of these, either a full stop or a question mark. And we have to put the backslash in front of the question mark because the question mark has a special meaning in uh, wildcard find and replaces. And there's your exclamation mark. So one of those 
followed by a 13, in other words a carriage return, because we have to use 13 rather than P when we're doing a find in the wildcards. So, uh, and then we have to replace it with that which we have found, in other words uh, backslash 1, the first item that's in parenthesis, um, followed by two carriage returns. So let's try that. So what I want to do, I just want to do run Fredit. There we go, let's run it. So it's it split that paragraph correctly and the next one and the next one. Um, but I think it's probably split here um, where it shouldn't have done. In other words, there happened to be a word with a full stop just at the very end of the line, even though it wasn't part of the, um, it wasn't a, a, an end of paragraph word. So occasionally, okay, we're going to get extra lines in, in other words, extra paragraph splits. But given that we've got 149,000 words to do this with, I think I'd rather work that way. Uh, and then when I read the text, I'll be able to see that there's a sort of break in the in the meaning there, and perhaps this this should not have been two um, paragraphs, but actually should have been one paragraph. So I can I can pull it back. Okay, so the idea is now to use this original um, find and replace item, so that all of these will be pulled into paragraphs uh, because they're separated by a double carriage return, which is fine, except that. If we go a bit further down the text, we discover that what we've got here, uh, let's get rid of the paragraph markers, um, this actually is a quotation um, and it should not be turned into paragraphs. It's supposed to be in these short lines. It, it's not poetry, but it's, it's a bit like that. And then we come back here to uh, normal text um, and interestingly, of course, there there's a there's a quotation mark which didn't split the paragraph, which it might have been nice to have done. Okay, so how are we going to work this? We can't do this uh, find and replace system here with the ZCs. We can't do that globally, but perhaps we can do it selectively through the document. Um, and okay, it's you know we we've got some work to do there, but it's not as bad as having to do the whole document manually. So let's try it. Um, let's move the credit re find and replace. No, let's just make it smaller. Uh, oh no, it's hang on. Where are we going? What we want is this one, not the. Uh, we've done the global one with the wildcard. This is the find and replace we want now. So what we want to do is to do it on sections of the text. So Fredit can work on a selection. So if we click in the first line there, then these ones are all ordinary paragraphs. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Right down to here. Then at this point, the quotation starts. So if I shift click on there, then you'll see that what I've done is selected the whole of that um, section and we can use the find and replace on that. So if I run Fredit, Fredit says work on selected text only and I say yes by clicking it or just pressing return and so it's done the uh, find and replace on that section but it's left the this section here, um, un sorry the section down here unchanged. So then I come to here I can do the same again, go down here, I uh, don't know where the next quotation is, uh, how far is it, I think that, uh, no that's not, a, yes that's a quotation there actually, um, can't, I, it's difficult to see when I've enigmatized the text, but I think that might be a quotation, so let's suppose it is, so if shift click there, run for edit, yes, and it does it. Um, Okay, I thought, well, uh, yeah, I can actually speed it up a little bit more if I make a little macro which actually does what the um, Fredit list does. So I've done that. So I've got a macro. Um, that's the enigmatizer. I don't want that. 
Um, the I've called it lines to paragraphs. Let's copy it and take it out of there so that we can see it. Um, let's put it in here. Bring it in. Let's put it in there. So what we've got is um, a find and replace. So there's the uh, carrot p, carrot p, and the zc, and the replace all. That's one. Then we change the text, the, the find text to sing, uh, carrot p, and the replacement to a space, and do that one. Then the zc and the carrot p, carrot p. Because we're using a selection, we have to be careful here because um, we have to have wrap to be find stop. In other words, if it says find continue, which is what it normally what you normally use for a, a global find and replace, uh, then it will go through the selected te text and then it will say, okay, I want you want me to find continue. So it would go right to the end of the text, right back to the beginning of the text and right round again. So it would do the whole lot. So this line here just makes sure that when it's done that find and replace it stops um, and uh, only does the find and replace on the selected text. Okay, so let's um, do that. Let's get rid of that, put that out of the way. So we've now got a macro that does what we wanted to do before. So if we um, decide we want to go, that's after the quote there, so we want to go from there and down to another quote so down to there shift click and then I can run the macro with a keystroke and it's done that so it's just one less keystroke and it's it's quicker rather than waiting for Fredit to respond and giving me my sort of double bong noise so more quotations here up to there click there go down to here um, to wherever the next quotation is oh, it doesn't matter where it is but that's the point and then click the macro and there's the, uh, the text that it's done. Okay, so I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching.